uh, I was asked to speak. I'm actually very surprised to be asked to speak, but then the more I think about the, some of the things that, uh, that I faced personally uh, as, as a scientist, uh, I, I think they really resonate with the, the theme of today. And so I have a few notes just to, to prompt myself, but one of the things that I, I really do believe is really important, and is the one thing I, I hope you can take away, is the, the positive, as a PI, as, as a scientist, the, the, the environment that you can create if it's not just very supportive, but very equal. This is really, really important. And I've, I've, I've faced this personally uh, just by having different types of students in the lab and different trainees, different levels, different ages, different backgrounds. So one of the things I find to be really, really important that has been very positive in my lab is when you normalize things that we were talking about before that are different between people, whether it's knowledge, seniority, backgrounds, um, uh, different types of opportunity that people have had or not had, Normalizing something, especially if it's uncomfortable, is really, really important. So, very, very simple thing. So we always, so a PI with trainees, but even within the trainees, there are different levels, right? You have senior trainees training, you know, uh, ju uh, junior trainees. So one of the things that's very, very important is that you show that making mistakes and that there's a that there's a that there's a way, there's a path for growth. So one of the things that's very, very important, and that I find, is that they're always very, very timid very shy, there's a power to differential, and you have to acknowledge that. But you also have to try to remove that as much as you can. It's very difficult to do that, but it is something that can be done in different ways. So one of the examples I have is if there's some sort of, uh, for example, a journal club or some kind of leadership role that can be given to a student in your lab for some reason within your institute, within your department, sometimes choosing the one person that, you would not, that other people would not think should be leading that is really, really important. And it's, A, is to give confidence to that person, but also beyond the confidence is to really show other people that, that, you, that they need to kind of think much more diverse, right? Because so many times it'd be the senior person, the person that you rely on the, the most, the, the go-to person, and that person keeps getting more and more opportunities versus the people who are younger or, or maybe don't have as much experience, they don't get as many opportunities. So for me, personally speaking, you brought, you, uh, you brought it before, where Janet Rassant gave you an opportunity. Sometimes you just have to give someone an opportunity. Just because it's the right thing to do, and, and, and you have to show that you give them confidence, that you have confidence in their ability. This is not something that's um, passively done. You have to be, it's very active. And so for me, this is very important because I've actually faced a couple times where as a PI, I've almost missed like, very serious mental health issues in the lab where I was never trained at all to, to deal with it. And so one example in like year two or three, so I've been like seven or eight years now there, um, where the student, you, you have to be very observant. You have to look for patterns of their behavior and what they're normally doing. Obviously sometimes over the years they get better. But <clears throat> if you start to notice things differently about them and the times they're coming in, um, are they talking less in lab? Are they not approaching you as much? Not that everyone has, doesn't change, but you have to be very, very observant. So for me, personally speaking, there was an example where we were trying to resubmit a, a, a paper, and there's a deadline, right? and you don't want to really miss that deadline. You can ask for more time, but I kept pushing the student, we have to finish, and it looked like it was not going towards that, you know, the, the deadline was not going to be met. And you know, as, as a junior PI or any PI, your, your, your heart sinks, you're like, we need to submit this, we have to, just, this is a scientific thing, but this is much more than, this is any kind of deadline, in any kind of, um, uh, it doesn't have to be science, right? They can be in any work, uh, workplace environment. But you have to notice the science. And what ended up, ended up happening with it, the student was succumbing to the pressure and they were really, they, they needed help beyond what I could give them. So this is where, if I, if I did not notice this, that I, I, and this is really right near the end, where getting outside counsel, getting outside help within the University of McMaster, there's a whole series of people that they can meet, and we were able to kind of build her confidence back up. So now, and now I'm really proud to say that she's one of the top, she's the best student in my lab. She's so successful, extremely smart. But if you were to just look at her and see her path, you could have easily said that this person would have been is very weak at the time, and they're not they're not, they're, not, they're not good for science. They're not good for science. They're not going to be able to cut it. So you really have to take a chance on some uh, on people and be very, very observant. So an another one of the things that I, I, I tend to do, <clears throat> and this is very hard, 
not just in science but in the workplace, is honesty. If you've either mess, so, so kind of decriminalizing the like, either you know a lack of progress that they're not going to be reprimanded every single time they don't make progress. So that open honesty and that 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 really is to me extremely important because what it does is it creates an environment where if if the mistake is made or something is not going to be done, they come to me first. They don't come. They don't. They they don't need to worry. Maybe like. What's he gonna say? What's uh, you know? This, this is this something is due in a little while. So it it allows you to kind of build confidence in these students because they 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 see that I'm not not just not gonna get mad, but it's the way that you deal with students, right? It's, it's the way that you're talking with them that you're trying to be as equal as possible, and that that power differential goes away. Because that power differential sometimes can do really really bad things. It can really make students go down, uh, take a turn, and you know some, some of the worst cases are always things like falsified data and things like that. But also in their personal growth, they tend to not uh, grow as much as they should, right? If they don't have that true, honest, open relationship with, uh, with. So I, I try to instill that in everyone, especially the junior people. Because the junior people, I think, need the most help. Um, and, and if you don't pay attention to them, I feel like they're the ones that are not going to become the senior people that you want them to become. Um, one of the other things that I tend to do very actively now is when there's issues, uh, especially if this is you know, in a lab, but this is really much more workforce related, um, it's, everyone's always very embarrassed if they make a mistake or something goes wrong that they don't want to be called out on it. Now, I, I don't either. But I think one of the most important things as, a, as somebody with, you know, when there's a power differential in general, not just being a PI, is to, is to take that embarrassment away. You really have to make an active effort to take that away uh, and, then, and then talk about this openly. So it would be, for example, if I, if I had made a mistake, you know, if this was like a board meeting and I had made a mistake, you know, the senior board members should be asking me to explain the mistake to people, but there shouldn't be you know, fingers being pointed. Right? I think that kind of environment is really, really hard. It's, it's, it's much more of a utopia and like he's, he's saying these things maybe, maybe you know, for certain things that it can be okay. But that has actually transformed my lab drastically uh, by, 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 having that, um, by having that platform. So one, you know, kind of like one, one example of this is, a, is, is given undergrads in my lab a very, very strong voice. And typically, they wouldn't have that in a lab. And so and I, what I like to say is that some of these undergrads, that they've been not just given the freedom to kind of be who they are, but they've given this, this confidence that may not be deserved at the time. But it builds them so much within, the, for, within that year that it, I, I would say that more undergrads in my lab have contributed to papers because of that confidence, because they feel that they can do something, that, that, that they're doing something that's actually vital and that they're needed, not just I'm working for someone else. So that ability to give confidence to people is not passive. It's very, very active. You have to maintain these types of relationships, and you, you actually have to instill confidence in these students periodically. That actually means sitting down with people and talking to them and actually finding out what are the issues and then tackling them and saying, that's, that's, that's you know, trying to help them with their problems as opposed to kind of chastising them and saying, like, you need to do better, you need to do better. It's my job, it's, it's, it's our job to help them do, uh, to, to, to make them better and help them do better things. So this is an active process. This is very difficult to kind of conceptualize, but when you have a student that's not going down the path that you want them to go down, or if it's somebody who's a subordinate, for example, it's, you have to take that on as a challenge to yourself and not that that person is not meant to be where they're supposed to be. You have to be challenging them to see, can you make them better or not? And typically, you will make them better. It may not be on the time scale that you want, but eventually that will work. So that's one of the things I really feel it's, it's, it's extremely important uh, in, in terms of talking to trainees and talking to people who are, um, who are in your lab or in your workforce is to really be very, very active and making sure that you're monitoring their progress and monitoring their mental health as well. Because I've on two occasions almost missed it. I'm very lucky that I did not. But I can just think what could happen in, in, in other situations where people did not get the help that they need. 
right? It, it, it sometimes are drastic consequences, but many times it's just going to be very minor but accumulative over time. They're not going to have the confidence that, that they're supposed to have. They may not get opportunities in the future. So sometimes you have to, as, as, as someone, as a PI, for example, you have to be very aware of this. You have to make sure that you actually instill confidence in people, and especially in the times where maybe they don't have confidence, and, and give them opportunities. So that's it.